Conservative MP and former Defence Secretary Dr Liam Fox and the broadcaster and author Nina Mishkov. Dr Fox, this has changed everything, hasn't it? We have to increase our military spending now. Well, we're one of the few countries that actually spends above the NATO thresholds. We're spending 2.3% uh, of our GDP on defence. And given the size of our GDP, that makes us the second biggest spender in NATO after the United States. It's good that Germany is catching up. But even when Germany does catch up, after many years of being behind, it still will be behind the UK in terms of share of GDP. So it's great to see Germany doing that. And I think it's uh, great that Chancellor Schultz is doing that. I wish it had happened a long time before. NATO would be in a better place. But when we've got some other NATO members at less than 1% of GDP, it shows you the, 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 uh, the, the rise in NATO spending that will be needed just to keep its members uh, on track with the rest. And the problem with NATO is that for many of its members, they all want to have the insurance policy, but many of them have not wanted to pay the premiums. No, and I completely understand, and I think it's wrong, and I agree with Trump. They should be spending the two the two percent of GDP figure. But for us, Doctor Fox, let's just forget our NATO allies for one moment and look at our situation. Uh, we have stripped back the armed forces over years and years and years because we hoped there would never be another European war. Now there is, so I think we're going to have to pu- to pummel money into it. Well, it's always nice to spend more. And uh, Russia knows, as many of our enemies do, that we're much more concerned about plowing money into our uh, uh, welfare-addicted political system than national security. But let's remember what Britain does. Britain carries a very heavy financial burden in terms of nuclear deterrent. We have increased our naval capability with our two carriers and our uh, purchase of F-35s. We can't do everything. And I think there's a very strong argument that within NATO, We have to work out what it is that each country brings to it rather than every country trying to do everything, uh, but not so efficiently. Uh, And I think that we need to recognise where Britain's strengths uh, lie. And as a maritime nation, uh, we need to ensure that we have a strong Navy and strong naval capability, not least because 90 odd percent of our trade comes by sea. That is what we we need uh, to be able to have. I think there's a strong argument for some of the European continental states. Uh, improving the size of their army, where they're less dependent um, on on maritime power than we are. How ready are we for a nuclear threat from Russia? We have a nuclear deterrent, but I think that we've got to stop this playing into Putin's hands. Putin's talking about the nuclear question because that suits him in terms of propaganda. And every time we start to concentrate on this, we're playing into the Putin propaganda argument. Um, We have an adequate nuclear deterrent in the United Kingdom, in France, in the United States. Uh, He wants us to talk about nuclear issues, not about the potential slaughter in Ukraine. And we mustn't play his game by going down that route.